Okay, so let's talk about how you can use Templator to localize text within your compositions. Using Google's Translate API, you can actually translate data in your spreadsheet and then pipe that into your composition for use with Templator. This project that I have open is a sting that essentially has like a headline and this headline says template and beneath it it has a subheader that says automated video and then beneath that it has the language that these terms are in. Now this project makes use of Video Copilot's Element 3D which I highly recommend and Templator works really well with it when it you know uses uh, text for extrusion and animation of the text. So let's take a look at what Templator is doing with its rigged up spreadsheet. If I go to preview use a start row and change that to next row I'm going to advance this a little bit and then hit preview. What you're going to see is Templator replacing all of the terms in a particular language. And you can see it down below, it's showing that, uh, you know, what language it is displaying in. So let's head on over to the Google Sheets document that's driving all this magic. So I've got this localizing video sheet opened up in my Google Drive. And this first column is an ID column, but it also specifies which language each render job is going to use. The next column is a locale code that's specified by Google, and it's a two-letter code that Google uses for any language that it can translate into. This third column here is just a term that I want translated, and the fourth column shows the translation of that term. And then this is also another term I want translated. And finally, this shows the translated, the translation for this term right here in this column. Now, if we take a look at this column here and we look at these cells, we can see that the value of these cells is a function and it's equal to Google Translate. And that function takes three different parameters. In this case, I'm on Estonian. And you can see that C11 refers to this term, which is the native English term. And then I've got this two letter code here, EN, which refers to English. And that's the language that I want to translate from. And then I've got this B11 here, which refers to the two letter code that I want to translate into. And so that's how I can get a term translated within my Google Sheets. So for example, instead of automated video, I did hello here and hit enter, uh, it's going to translate hello into Estonian for me. So I'm going to go back to automated video and there's the translated Estonian term for automated video. So that's quite powerful, especially when you're using it in conjunction with video production. Now it's worth noting that uh, there's two worksheets inside this spreadsheet. The worksheet we've been looking at is labeled Latin and Cyrillic only. So the reason I did this is because the font that is used in my project only contains glyphs for the Latin and Cyrillic languages. So if I go back to my sheet and I do this one, which is just labeled automated video, you can see that it's not well, you know, I haven't really cleaned it up, but you can see it's got many more languages. For example, it's got Hebrew here. Well, the unfortunate thing about this font is the designer doesn't include the Hebrew letter forms, so this would not work. So when I go to my Google spreadsheet setup and link the localizing video sheet to the project, I would have to select Latin and Cyrillic only. Otherwise, it's going to bring up you know, the Hebrew term and it's not going to be able to translate it into that particular font. It, it simply won't work the way that I would expect it to work. So that's just something to take note of. Now, you know, you can do whatever you want, but make sure that when you are using a translation, uh, that your font that you're using in your AE project supports these glyphs. All right, so let's head on over to our AE project and talk about how the compositions and the layers are rigged up to work with Templator. So this main composition contains all of the layers that make up the meat of this animation here. So I'm going to bring this up a little bit. Now there are a few layers that are significant. One is this placeholder end which is referenced by the element 3D plugin. 
Another one is this text composition that's nested. And then finally, this end tag is, I believe, this one right here. Nope, uh, it's this layer right here. So this element 3D solid is, you know, is what displays this text up here. So what we're going to look at is how the element 3D layer actually gets the text. So if I open up the effects here, you can see I've got my element plugin applied. And then I've got the path layer set to placeholder end layer. And that, if you recall, is the first layer up here. So that's how element references the actual text. Now, this layer, if we open this guy up, you can see that the source text is being referenced from a layer in the text composition that's nested in this comp. So if I close that, this is the text composition. Now, I'm going to double click this. And you can see, here's our mapped data. OK, so it's mapped by virtue of the layer name being trans-template and also having the templater settings effect applied to it. So if we go back to the spreadsheet, you can see that we've got the trans-template name mapped to the layer name. So if I use the you know, next row preview and hit preview, you're going to see that the data is actually being fed in from the spreadsheet to this layer. Now, the templater settings effect uh, doesn't really much matter here because Element is going to handle all of the actual rendering of the text. So I did set the scale factor to 100% to make sure that I could read it no matter what came into the, uh, to this comp. But I, you know, this is not being referenced in Element 3D at all. So if we go back to main, we can see that uh, if I hit preview, you know, we're, we're getting that change. And the important thing to realize is that the element plugin has to have a particular setting applied so that you, know, you can actually make sure that this text is normalized or is uh, scaled to a certain you know, width. So if I click on Scene Setup and click on my Extrude options here and click on Extrusion Model for this, uh, this group, uh, if I go down to my Transform Properties, you can see that scale is set to 100%, but that I have this normalized size checked. So if I did not have that checked and I clicked OK, you're going to see that this is going to not be normalized to 100% of the scale of the Element 3D layer. So if I hit Next Row, it's not doing really what I intended it to do. So uh, you know, if you want to make sure that you know your your extruded text is going to be normalized. Uh, a normalized scale, you want to make sure that this normalized uh, checkbox is on. So now when I hit preview, it's going to be normalized to uh, you know, a certain size. All right, so to wrap up, I'm going to show you a couple of batch processes. The first one is going to be the make comps replication process. And then finally, I'll show you the render process. So let's go ahead and take a look at what happens when I use the make comps feature. Well, for, for my render row range, what I really want to do is set this to something like, uh, let's see, I have it selected here, 14 through 19, so Galatian through Irish, so this will turn into 14, and this one will turn into 19. And I'm going to go ahead and hit Make Comps. And what you're going to see in the project panel, after it's done, uh, it's going to show you that all the comps actually have been replicated in this templator comps right here. And you can see each row is placed into an individual subfolder within this templator comps folder. And the comps themselves are also named according to uh, you know, the target composition and then the ID, which is you know, specified here. So that's a quick way to you know, duplicate your comps if you want to share the duplicates amongst different artists. And you can also see that the render queue is getting those comps loaded up. And they're actually set to render to the output folder that is found here, you know, that I specified here. So that, in a nutshell, is the make comps feature. Now, to get it actually to load up into the render queue, I should note that the preferences panel allows you to do that. So you need to have this add generated comps to render queue checked.
I also want to note that uh, this make comps feature is really helpful if you have uh, some kind of, uh, you know, render farm set up in your internal network and you want to process all of these render jobs here in the render queue very efficiently. So you can use something like BG Renderer Pro or, you know, another solution that your studio might have. Okay, so for the sake of just demonstrating the render process, I'm going to go ahead and for my template, I'm going to set this to draft settings and I'm going to hit render. And what this is going to do is it's going to tell me, okay, are you sure you want to render all those rows because it's going to delete any files in this render output folder. And I'm going to go ahead and click yes. So you can see that now Galatian is being processed, albeit, uh, you know, as a draft. So it's all, you know, jaggedy. But the next one is going to show you that, you know, Haitian is being processed. And this does it, you know, in order as shown in the spreadsheet. So, you know, this can be really nice and helpful for when you are working with your, uh, you know, your, your localized text.